My name is Dr. Taylor Wilmer. I am a clinical psychologist and I specialize in providing exposure-based cognitive behavioral therapy or exposure therapy for children, adolescents, and adults with anxiety disorders and OCD. So I'm here to talk a little bit about what exposure therapy is, what its goals are, what the rationale is behind exposure therapy, and who it can be useful for. So exposure therapy is a type of cognitive behavioral therapy that's focused on facing your fears in order to overcome them. It's traditionally used to treat anxiety disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD, and post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. And for all of these conditions, uh, for individuals who experience these conditions, they tend to avoid the things that they fear the most. So for instance, somebody with social anxiety might avoid meeting new people, having a conversation, or giving a presentation. Or somebody with OCD that had contamination fears might avoid touching specific surfaces that might be contaminated. So avoidance comes up in anxiety because when we avoid the things that we're afraid of, it gives us some relief in the moment. So we actually get less, we have less anxiety in the moment. The problem with avoidance is that in the long term, both research and clinical experience shows us that anxiety actually gets worse over time the more a person avoids. And so exposure therapy is specifically designed to address that avoidance, to try and help people get back into their lives and live the life that they want without having to avoid all the different things in their life that might trigger anxiety. So the way that we do this in session is a client and a therapist will explore the situations that tend to trigger anxiety and they'll make a list. And the list will go from least anxiety provoking to the most anxiety provoking situations. We call this an exposure hierarchy or for kids, I'll call this a bravery ladder. I like to think of this as like a training plan and the therapist is the coach. So if you think of training for running, for running a marathon, for instance, you wouldn't start by trying to run 20 miles. You'd start by running maybe two miles and then working your way up to three miles and then working your way up to five miles. And over the course of several months, you'd work your way up to running 20 miles, 22 miles, 26 miles. And exposure therapy is kind of like this. We start in session with exposures that trigger a small to moderate amount of anxiety with the support of your therapist. And then we work up to the situations that feel more challenging or trigger larger amounts of anxiety. For instance, the way that that might work is that somebody with social anxiety, for instance, might start by having a three minute conversation in session with their therapist. And then maybe the next exposure would be something like saying hello to the receptionist at their work or the receptionist at their gym. And then they would work up over time to having a short small talk conversation with a coworker in the break room. So we start small and we work our way up. The goals of exposure therapy are twofold. So first, after doing an exposure multiple times, we expect that that situation is gonna cause less anxiety. We call this habituation. I think of this as kind of like watching a scary movie. The first time you watch a scary movie, it's terrifying. You're watching through your fingers. The second time you watch it, it's a little bit less scary. And then the 10th time you watch it, you start to notice how fake the blood looks and how silly the monster looks. And it's just not as scary as it was before. And so exposures are kind of like this. The more you do an exposure, the less scary it gets. The second goal of exposure is to start to unlearn the connection between what anxiety predicts will happen and what actually happens. So we call this inhibitory learning. Anxiety likes to tell us that if you do something scary, you won't be able to handle it or everything is gonna go wrong. That worst case fear is gonna, is gonna happen. With exposure, we actually have a chance to test this theory. So for instance, for somebody with panic disorder, they might feel anxious about going grocery shopping because they're worried about having a panic attack. So for an exposure, we might have them walk up to the front of the store and maybe go inside the store a few times. And they have a chance to learn that actually the likelihood of having a panic attack when they go grocery shopping is low and they can handle being anxious in the context of a grocery store.
So through exposures, you get to learn that anxiety is not always accurate and that you can handle feeling anxious and being uncomfortable, that you can cope with those uncomfortable feelings. So exposure therapy is the gold standard treatment for anxiety disorders, PTSD, and OCD, and has been shown to be highly effective for those conditions. Sometimes exposure therapy goes by different names. So for PTSD, exposure therapy is sometimes called prolonged exposure, or PE, and other treatments for PTSD, like trauma-focused CBT, or TFCBT, or cognitive processing therapy, CPT, both also involve exposure elements. For OCD, exposure is typically called exposure and response prevention, or ERP. And I like to mention here too that there's actually been some data to support that exposure therapy can be effective for eating disorders as well, and that's still being researched. Exposure therapy, a typical exposure therapy protocol lasts for 16 to 20 weeks, so four to five months. But of course, the duration of treatment is gonna vary depending on a person's symptom severity, frequency, uh, session frequency, and engagement in treatment. Uh, usually the treatment will start by the therapist spending some time getting to know you and learning about the different things that make you anxious. And then the therapist will help you learn about more about your anxiety and about the thoughts, the feelings, and the behaviors that are connected to your anxiety. Then you'll make that exposure hierarchy and start exposures. And exposure therapy usually starts with exposures in session with the therapist and then can progress to exposure ther exposures happening out of session in the community, either with the therapist or for homework between sessions without the therapist. Um, and exposure therapy is meant to be short term so that you can get out of therapy and get back into the life that you want to live. Now, the best way to find somebody who has experience with exposure therapy is to ask some questions before you start seeing them. So some questions that you can ask are things like, what is your training and background and working with people with anxiety disorders, OCD or PTSD? What is your training and background in cognitive behavioral therapy? Uh, what techniques do you use to treat anxiety, OCD or PTSD? And then even more specifically, do you use exposure therapy in treatment? And if so, what kinds of exposures might we do in our work together? So you can get a sense that way of how much experience a person has, whether or not they use exposure therapy and what exposures might look like for you in session. And of course, if you have any more questions or want to learn more about exposure therapy, um, there's some great resources online, including ADAA.org uh, and the IOCDF website as well.